but I saw no real reason for that. I had embarked on an inner journey of love. How could any harm come out of that? It was my 10th rule. East, west, south or north makes little difference. No matter what your destination, just be sure to make every journey a journey within. For if you travel within, you'll travel the whole wide world and beyond. Hello and welcome to one and all. This is Shaista Fatima and you're watching Avaaz The Voice. But you must be wondering that what was I just reading? Well, it was the 10th rule from the book called 40 Rules of Love by Elif Shafak. She's one of my favorite writers, but that's not why I was reading it. It is because the topic today that we're discussing on this podcast is about Sufism. So yeah, let's start on that. But before that, let me introduce you to my guest, my editor-in-chief, Ma'am Asha. Hello, Ma'am. Welcome to the Hi. show. Thank you. Thank you, Shaisa. So, uh, we are discussing today the topic of Sufism. And yet again, viewers, this is a discussion between two generations. Uh, me and Ma'am Kosa comes from, like, it's just a mother-daughter show, I would say. So, let me welcome Ma'am again and let's just start upon the journey of within or a journey of oneself to the almighty well ma'am i'm getting all perplexed and confused today i don't know why maybe something is not amiss maybe you would like to throw the divine light over here uh thank you shaista for having me here uh well uh, i i uh, heard your the beautiful lines you read from uh, this famous book yeah. uh she's a very uh, shaista is very well read you know these all books that you see here these are her books and this is from one author that is she's a turkish author uh, elif shafa so it's i i she gifted me one book and i have also read it so these are um, the one i am reading that is from the 40 rules of love it's a beautiful story i'm halfway through it and uh, the lines shaista you read uh, it I, it it really touched my soul it is basically what the writer is saying that you take an inner journey and you have traveled the world yeah. your inner journey is a real journey uh, well it sounds very metaphysics kind what is inner journey and all that uh, it is in a way but if you um, my experience is that if you if you take it in a very simplistic way uh, without reading books very simplistic just sit quiet for one minute and don't talk don't think talking is uh, absolutely forbidden just don't don't think it's very difficult you find it's very difficult i think that is a inner journey when you look within and that is what sufis preach they talk teach us meditation they teach us uh, the inner controls we need to do a self introspection go in words instead of looking at the outer world look in words and then uh, probably that is the journey what probably they are trying to say and lot of sages who we may not call um, call uh, sufi essentially but what they are essentially telling us that you need to look within within yourself be quiet look within your mind and then find peace and that if you find peace the same peace will be reflected outside to you and you can also spread that peace this is my personal way of uh, connecting with the almighty yeah, and also if you call it yeah. following sufism I call it like that. Ma'am, Kashmir is known for being a Sufi hub. Kashmir is known for its saints like Nind, uh, Nundrishi, Nundrishi yes, yes, yes. Uh, and he had this other name also, uh, uh, Sheikh Nuruddin Nurani, yeah. Alamdar Kashmiri, and that song from uh, Tere Dar Pe Bhar Do Joli Meri Ya um, Mohabbat. Was that? In? That. Um, uh from that movie of salman khan yes yes uh, bajrangi bhai bajrangi bhai jaan so these all things make kashmir even more exotic the sufism that is there you know the the soul of kashmir so can you tell me something about that what is your experience any personal experience that you have had as a child or growing up there well in kashmir we actually used to practice what is called what people call uh you know syncretic living sufism they give different names mm-hmm. to it we used to practice it uh, in every sense i remember uh, i'm from a hindu family my grandmother used to take me to we used to go to meet relatives mm-hmm. and kashmir is srinagar prop you could just walk down mm-hmm. it was just 1 km a beautiful climate and we could walk down so on the way we would go to a masjid beautiful stone masjid we used to call it patthar masjid 
माने पत्थर का मस्जिद एंड देन देयर वाज अ काली टेंपल फर्स्ट वी विल गो टू काली टेंपल एंड देन माय मदर विल से ग्रैंड मदर विल से गो बो बिफोर द मस्जिद आल्सो सो दैट वाज अ वे ऑफ लाइफ फॉर पीपल ओके एंड लाइक आई रिमेंबर आई यूज्ड टू लिव इन द अदर पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया सो आई यूज्ड टू गो फॉर माय वेकेशंस यूजुअली वी यूज्ड टू राइट योर एग्जाम एंड गो रिजल्ट वुड कम लेटर और मे बी वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग नेक्स्ट ईयर्स बेटर रिजल्ट सो वी विल गो टू uh local you know there every mohalla there is a peer hmm. you know there is there is a mausoleum of some peer it could be hindu it could be muslim hmm. i mean in my aunt's neighborhood in ali kadal there was somebody called resh peer hmm. i am yet to find out whether he is a muslim or not it didn't matter hmm. so we used to go to him and pray please uh, you know pass karo pass karo it was good pass and they used to give some bakery ka kulcha hota na that used to be prasad okay. and i remember the children we used to love that prasad and hmm. we used to actually believe if we keep it uska ek dana bhi you know we never used to allow it to yeah. fall down and we used to think that if we eat it well and preserve it uh-huh. and we used to keep it like this you know okay. so that doesn't fall even a grain of it doesn't hmm. fall that was the uh, the conviction faith, the faith, conviction yeah. faith of everybody okay. and i also remember the vocabulary we used uh, like suppose a muslim uh, is passing through a hindu temple hmm. or anything related to hindu hmm. he not say it's a temple or what they say oh it's a asthan okay it's a asthan asthan was the okay. common word hmm. a word which is uh, uh, used and, yeah, commonly even everywhere hindus yeah. used to call like uh-huh. we pass through masjid oh the bo here my grandmother okay. say bo here uh-huh. because it's a asthan it's so a, that was uh-huh. the, we were living uh, the way sufis hmm. the ascetics the yeah. the mystics yeah. they taught us like good human beings hmm. but somehow things changed and uh, but that's my childhood memory you tell me what is your uh, memory uh, i know you read lot of books on uh, most of them refer to mysticism sufism yeah, so what is your personal take on connecting with god let's make it so, simple um i would say my first see i have always been a weird kid from my childhood <laughs> like i remember sitting in standard 2 when teacher was teaching and i was just looking out of the window i still remember the whole scene the grass was green the trees were there that scene is like somehow embedded yeah. the sky was blue and it had some patches say of the clouds that were there so i was just looking and I was trying to write something that you know the wind is blowing so i was totally imagining my teacher came up to me and like you know she gave me a tippy on the head and she's like kya kar rahe ho why aren't you studying i said i don't belong here and i still remember so i have been but i never knew that who i was or what i i was doing then came this book in my life and why because uh, i was in jamia mcrc and my roommate arwa she is also from kashmir and she is uh, she has been a big influence in my life uh, in understanding sufism so she was the one who gave me this book and she is like your life is going to change so i was like okay really okay let me read so it was not until after one or two years after she went back to kashmir she finished her course and i was like missing her so just because i was missing her i read this and once i read this i was hooked on to it and then elif shafak became my favorite author because i've read all her work and she's a practicing sufi so they talk about like they say that the god is within you yes. and every human is a microcosm of his being of his supreme being no matter who you worship or whom you are like bowing in front of if you believe in that supreme power if you believe uh, that there is truth beyond you know yeah. your uh, you physical see, actually yeah. what you see uh, that is it that is what is connecting to the god so you yourself are an incomplete book of his you are following a path that he is there i am following a path i am an incomplete book i am an incomplete journey and i have his being in me you have his being every human has it so so this is what this book you know this says the name halaki feels like 40 rules of but love but if i can interrupt you for a minute shaisa i mean the the children of your generation you have lot of things to indulge yourself in mm. you know you have whatever i mean uh, the world is uh, you know at your fingertips you can just press a button of your mobile and you know everything is up so much of information coming to your mind so much of material uh, things around you uh, but as a human being i'm sure you also sometime want uh, to connect with god or with your mind or with your inner self 
how do you do that as a person you tell me how do you do that <laughs> thank you so much for bringing back me uh, like bringing me back to the topic so it happened in the morning only so somehow my wallet dropped and oh. it had a lot of cash in it yeah and uh, i was like i called you up and i'm like uh, you know this is a conversation we are telling you the flashback story <laughs> right over here viewers so i called her up and she was like okay just go back home and see if your wallet is there since it had my you know id card my atm and wallet so i was like going back and uh, there was this uh, voice ringing in my head that do you believe in me do you believe in allah i said yeah i do i just looked up to the sky and that voice was questioning kitna yakeen hai maine kab khud se zyada bahut zyada my self phone rang and you know i'm having goosebumps right now and the person from the other end said ki aapka mujhe wallet mila tha kahin gira hua and if you want to collect it come over here and just collect it come so i just went there fabulous fabulous and yeah i mean i think uh, that is my connection with god or almighty so i just look up at the sky whenever i need anything and i'm not being uh, uh, i'm not joking like i'm not kidding actually i would say Uh, but yeah this is my but what is your connection with almighty how do i'm sure that you are a nature lover by the way viewers yes, she uh, she has this huge garden on her terrace terrace garden and she has a dog called chelsea so she has her own ways and means and she is a practicing sufi this is what i have learned while working with her for the past two years so mom yeah tell me about your sufi experience and how do you connect with almighty no as you rightly said i mean she's a very discerning viewer of me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I I connect with the nature you put me in the lap of nature and I'm lost and when I am in the nature I actually feel who am I you know uh, the nature is so big uh, and I'm just a speck of the nature not even a dot in the nature so it puts me it levels me so I I get very level headed you know we all pass through through tensions daily tension long term tensions uh, life is not all about being happy 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 so uh, all of us have our low ups and lows but when i am low i just go to my garden whatever little i have it's not very big it's a terrace garden you know we live in delhi you can't have a very big garden so whatever it is i cherish it so i will i will do some digging i will uh, you know deweed it i will i will uh, remove some dead dead leaves and that is my catharsis i connect okay. with it and i i even talk i think that oh what beautiful nature is you know from a seed i have grown this plant and is giving us fruits yeah. so i i somehow feel humble who am i what am i able to do i wow. will not be able to mm-hmm. produce something like this and then kind of grow it into big so my ego gets level so that mm-hmm. keeps me me under under control in uh, you know yeah. i don't you stay, stay grounded stay you, grounded you, you are, but i'll tell you yeah. one more experience which mm-hmm. i had um, Uh, my daughter's school had a very nice trick to mm. train children in this this game uh, i i i nobody told me this but after interviewing my daughter uh, i came to know that they had a counselor you know most of the schools mm. nowadays have counselor to help students so uh, my daughter was totally dismissive of the counselor she had mm. some tiff with a girl and i said go and t- talk to counselor she said oh she's good for nothing because she sends us into a prayer room I okay. said then what does she do there what do you do there she says okay you fought with her okay both of you come here and go and sit in the prayer room oh. and there uh, that school prayer room had symbols of all the religion no deities oh. symbols of all the religion hmm. the the punishment or you say penance was you go and sit there quietly for half an hour <laughs> and i'm wow. sure they came yeah, chase child you know uh. when you look within hmm. uh, it's a very simple simple exercise just look within hmm. keep silent keep your thoughts close it's very difficult process hota nahi hai yeah because we go through so yeah, many turmoil your subconscious yeah. mind is always working yeah so uh, you consciously uh, try to that is meditation also yeah. and it's not easy it's not easy i read somewhere i'm sorry i'm interrupting otherwise i'm going to forget no, this my, line and and then yes, tell uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so the that uh, i read somewhere that uh, the most of the talking that one person can do to with, with oneself is with oneself like you talk in your head the most yeah, of the time all the time so you, you need to be humble with yourself you need to understand that you're not uh, 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 supreme you do not have everything but you're going to get it eventually so just be a little more you know uh, don't uh, judge yourself too much so maybe that is why you know yeah, yeah when you sit and you talk yes. you're being too harsh on yourself so uh, i think but then ma'am today 
like like you said that your generation and my generation we uh, you have seen us growing you know like but we have just seen you and you know you guys have been our role models we have looked up to you I and we so. <laughs> of course <laughs> we are so uh, what are your thoughts about uh, the contemporary sufism that is there and uh, the way we uh, you know connect uh, with one another and uh, how do you think that is has a religion like does a religion has to do anything with sufism or is sufism one's way of you know connecting with almighty uh, what well, i'm not a philosopher nor am i an expert on religion religion is a very personal matter mm. i believe i mean even if two people go to a mosque or a temple mm. same people they may perceive god in a different way mm. you know it's not they may do prayer in a certain way they pray you know in the mosque liye you pray differently for going to a temple you pray differently they two set of people but uh, they may have different perceptions about god mm. so uh, you cannot uh, apply uh, say religion is same for everybody yeah. it's a personal it's a perception person, yeah. then practice is personal mm. uh, i cannot judge you and nor yeah. should you judge me mm. because you can never judge what is going on inside my mind yeah. and thought process but mm. when it comes to connecting with inner self and mm. that is what i call sufism connecting with yourself uh, inner self that is godliness it is same see what happened to shaisa in the morning she lost her wallet and she looked up and said please help yeah i mean yeah. it doesn't matter what religion she practices yeah. what if i also i am from a different religion if i also have the same problem yeah. my reaction would be same yeah. i would say are yaar please help me yeah. my wallet i wanted back I want so back. that is yeah. that is spirituality yeah. and that is at uh, that is a point where all humans are the same they behave the same way they think the same way the rest of all is all pretension drama we are doing in the name of religion religion is a very 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 personal thing and spiritualism is universal uh, this brings me to this quotation uh, this is another book by elif shapak the architect's apprentice and it has the opening lines they have stuck me like i've always been a fan of it uh, of all the people god created and shaitan led astray only a few have discovered the center of universe where there is no good and no bad no past and no future no i and no thou no war and no reason for war just an endless sea of calm what they found there was so beautiful that they lost their ability to speak wow so i think fantastic if we are able to find ourselves we won't be interested in what the other person is doing because we'll be so busy with ourselves and i think world would be a better place better place to live but, in sure yeah but i think we are nobody is to discuss uh, or say you know like put labels on what it means to be we are just two people discussing our very own personal experiences so ma'am i think we should conclude it over here today yeah, at, uh, we should conclude on such beautiful yeah. closing lines that she read from her book It's fantastic. Not Very my good. book, from Elif yeah. Shafak's book, The Architect's Apprentice. So where there is no evil, where there is no bad, maybe we'll meet you someday soon again, same studio, some other time, but with our other voice. So stay tuned, follow us, share us, and like us for more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.